I haven't started yet. You guys are clapping a little prematurely, I think. Well, hello everybody. I'm Ixuki Z, and um, today I'm going to be giving a presentation on wormhole space. Um, specifically, I'm going to be talking about trends and things going on uh, in wormhole space since last FanFest. If you've never seen one of my presentations, I give an annual wormhole recap talking about what's been going on since the last time you guys listened to me ramble about wormhole space. So um, for today though, uh, if, you're f if you've watched those before, I'm focusing on the latter half. That is, uh, I don't have time to do a full month by month walkthrough that you might be accustomed to. I'll be doing that in the future on talking in stations. But for today, we're gonna be looking at some data. We're gonna be talking about some trends. If you're very familiar with wormhole space already, today, might teach you some things. It might be like, oh, I knew that already. If you're not that familiar with wormhole space, I'm hoping that some of this will be interesting and you might learn something. And, um, and it will debunk a couple myths and talk about uh, triglavian ships and whatnot since that's this year's theme. So uh, real quick, uh, what we're gonna run through, I'm gonna tell you very briefly about who I am. So you're like, who's this dude in the weird cape rambling at me? We're gonna talk about uh, ships dying, ISK dying in wormhole space. I'm gonna cover the different wormhole classes and how PVP is looking a bit different across some of them and both the kills, the ISK, and some of the ships that are getting used. I'm gonna talk about capital ships because everybody likes to hear about capital ships dying. Good news, there's a lot of them dying in wormholes. And uh, finally, we're gonna talk about some ship trends, um, especially about Triglavians again and how the wormhole brawling kind of our fight meta has been evolving over the last 15, 16 months. And then I'm gonna end on a recap of kind of just a brief snapshot of what it looks like today. So uh, if you don't know who I am, my name is Xuk Z. Um, I'm the CEO of the Dark Space Initiative, which if you haven't heard of that corp, you might have heard of scary wormhole people and seen the Kraken around. So uh, that's the group I roll with. I've been in wormhole space for over 10 years now. Um, it's actually the only thing I've really done primarily, wormhole space. So I'd like to think I'm qualified to talk to you about it. And while I've been there, I've done pretty much everything there is. We've, I've been ganked, ganked, capital ships, brawling, fax pilot, FC, small gang, been evicted, done evictions. I've dabbled in a bit of all of it. Not saying I'm good at any of it, but I've done all of it. So um, where I get the data from that we're gonna be talking about today though, because people are always like, whoa, where do you get your data? One, the, all this data is public. If you didn't know, the monthly economic report the CCP publishes every month actually has an Excel sheet in it that has every single person's ship that died that month unless you died to rats, in which CCP laughs at you, but it's not in the spreadsheet. <laughs> so uh, that being said, I do have data on drifter losses. So if you're dying to the drifter specifically, it is in fact in the kill dump. But otherwise, all the data I've got here, it's based off of losses. So it's not necessarily always completely uh, you know, right on with what's actually getting used, but I think it's a fairly safe assumption that if ships are being used more, more of that ship is probably dying. So um, some of the ISK values that we'll touch on might be a bit different than Z-Kill. Uh, CCP's numbers have gotten a lot better over the years. I give this slide is practically like cut and paste off of my presentation every year, but um, that gap has closed. Um, and there's actually a typo on this slide. Uh, we had to send these in at the beginning of this week and May's monthly economic report dropped on Tuesday. So all of my charts are updated to go all the way to last month up to May, but uh, clearly didn't fix that one. So, uh, so one of the, my favorite things that I love debunking and talking to people about is a wormhole space isn't dead. Uh, despite what you might hear, despite what, what people might be crying about on Reddit, Things are blowing up in wormhole space. And in fact, things are blowing up more in wormhole space now than for the most part they ever were. You know, we have our spizzy months, we have our slow months, but uh, you know, we, I've got a nice little trend line going on here. There are more things dying across the place than, than usual. Um, March 2019 set an all-time record for the amount of ships dying in wormhole space. Now, that number might be small to other parts of space, but um, there's, a, you know, there's more people out there killing stuff. So I love sharing that news that if you're like, oh, I'm bored in whatever part of space I'm in, I'm in right now, I think you should seriously consider giving wormhole space a shot. 
It's not dead, depending if you know where to look, and if you think, oh, I can't do that, you can probably do something else. If you're not a cap pilot, plenty of corps don't use caps. If you're only a cap pilot, there are corps that use those, although probably not as much as you might like then. Um, and there's plenty of corps out there that are not super ISK and super high skill point intensity um, you know, for you to go out there and fly. So uh, I'd always recommend that people do that. So, Right here is uh, the same chart that I kind of just showed with last year added in, something that I think was really interesting to note. 2017 summer had a very pronounced summer slump that you can kind of see on the left side. Like you can just see multiple months, it was low. Um, the 2018 summer was not, as, not quite as low and not quite as pronounced. We had some stuff and uh, like I noted, March 2019, highest amount of kills ever destroyed in a wormhole to date. I don't have all 10 years up here to show. I don't actually have some of the earliest years data really, but uh, I can say with confidence that in the last five years, all of these, most of this slide is just continuously going up. So it's, uh, there's a lot more stuff going on there. So you're like, okay, great. So Wingspan's killing lots and lots of herons on the high sec wormhole. Great story. So let's talk about the ISK. So there's a lot of ships dying, cool. There's also a lot of ISK being blown up. And what I wanted to kind of really just highlight for everybody here though is this year has seen some of the most consistently dangerous months on record. On average, 4.15 trillion ISK is dying every month in wormhole space. And that's, like I mentioned previously, that's before counting all the people just flat out dying to sleepers. There's lots of those too. Um, the drifter numbers are on here, but uh, normal sleepers are not, and neither are all the ventures dying in ordinary perimeter reservoirs. So <laughs> you know, if you don't get that joke, there's a gas site that has five sentry turrets in it. Lots of people make the mistake of warping in, the sentries lock really fast, and you're dead. So, uh, you know, I, I don't have such data, but I think it'd be hilarious to get a, an idea of which sites people die in the most, because I bet you that gas site's like number one for gas. Um, so, you know, this loosely follows the kill chart that we kind of looked at and talked about. Um, as you can see, it's fairly consistent. The summer was a little slow, but it's not as easy to tell here. And one of the things that's kind of noticeable in wormhole space is ever since we've added low power structures to the game, structures blow up more. And where structures are blowing up, there's people's ships blowing up. Because in wormhole space, we don't have asset safety. So if you're also asking EXO, are, what, you know, are your numbers including that guy who blows up 400 shuttles when he blows up the Astro House? Yes, yes, that is included here. It's not easy at all to prune those out of the data set. So not necessarily every ship that's dying actually had a pilot in it. Not every ISK that's showing up here in the chart had a pilot in it, but those are all there. Still tons of stuff blowing up though. Uh, so, and just like I did last time, this is multiple years. Um, we just saw the right side of this chart. On the left, you can see 2017 summer. It was a very distinct slump. Um, I think that boils down to a mixture of we've got more people coming in so it doesn't get as quiet. And during the summer when it does get quiet and people stop fueling their Astro Houses, they come back a couple weeks later and it's gone and so is all their stuff. So, you know, that's going on. Um, in comparison to the last time I got up and gave this presentation, the average ISK being destroyed per month in wormhole space has gone up by almost a trillion. We went from 3.4 to 4.15. So that's a lot of ISK. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with wormhole ISK, it's your average ship value is generally a bit higher than it is in nullsec. It's not uncommon for almost all fights in wormhole space to top a billion unless it's just two people shooting each other or wingspan killing herons. Um, so, you know, it's, it's out there. Um, but there's lots of stuff. Like, if you will only take one thing away from my presentation, what I want you to take away is wormhole space has lots of things blowing up. And if you like blowing things up, maybe you should come blow things up in wormhole space. So, if you're unfamiliar with wormhole space, there are six primary wormhole classes. There is class 13, 
Um, I don't have it on here. There is not a wormhole, so it's not going to be on here. Um, on the left, we have, we have a proportion of, of all the ships that died in a wormhole, which class did they die in? And on the right, we have of all the ships that died in a wormhole and how much they cost, where did all the X blow up? Couple, and this is where, you know, if you're familiar with wormhole space, this chart might not be super uh, surprising to you. Um, you know, we've got uh, C5 and C6 space are the two things that I think are noteworthy here in that they're the two classes that went from whatever chunk of the kills to a much larger chunk of the ISK. C2 space is actually the most busy as far as traffic goes. Um, that's primarily because all C2s are always connected to two other systems, one of which is K space, high sec, low sec, or null sec. The other is another wormhole class. They have the highest traffic of all of wormhole space. Um, and thus, they have the most ships blowing up. Those ships are not the most expensive ships because herons aren't that expensive. Um, I'm, I'm rep rep the, the heron's going to keep showing up because it's actually the number one ship that dies in wormhole space after pods. It's the heron, followed by the venture, followed by a bunch of all your other tech one frigates that are dying when new players are like, here's my wormhole. Tutorial says it'll be a fun time, and they jump in, and then the saber blows them up. <laughs> So, you know, that's how it goes, but herons are up at the top. Um, so your high-class wormhole space, C5 space, is generally thought of as being the busiest and the most full of PvP. That's not necessarily true. As we can see from the left, there's tons of stuff dying everywhere else. If you're looking for PvP, C1 and C6 are probably not the best place, but you're not going to go wrong in 2, 3, 4, or 5. They are all busy, they're all having stuff blow up. If you want the really juicy stuff, you probably want to go to C5 space, but that's also because C5 and C6 space, if you're unfamiliar with wormholes, those are the two classes that permit capitals to move between them. So these are the classes that have carriers dying while they're rolling holes, dreads are farming in them you know, uh, frequently, and when, when big corps go and clash, that's where you're having those big fights that frequently can top 30 billion isk. Speaking of capital ships, uh, everybody likes to hear that capital ships are blowing up, and so I can bring you the good news. This is true in wormhole space. There are more capital ships blowing up than pretty much ever before. Um, I don't have a big multi-year chart here for this one for you, but what I thought some people might find interesting is the second half of that chart has seen very stark increase in capital kills. A lot more people are out there using them, a lot more people don't know what they're doing and are losing them. Um, dreadnoughts make up the lion's share of all of this stuff, and they're out there dying left and right. And uh, you know, carriers are dying usually because they're rolling holes. Uh, I'm not going to focus immensely on the mechanics of how to roll wormholes. Uh, I don't think that would be the most interesting topic to tell a couple hundred people how to do. <laughs> but you know, if, if that's something you're like, Exo, give me a lesson on rolling wormholes. I can teach you later. I'm very good at it. So. Uh, and uh, one of the things I did think was also just interesting to note is war qual usage, and by usage I mean dying, is pretty consistent across the year. Uh, I don't get into the who's dying in war quals, but I can tell you having dug into it a little bit, people that want to be using war quals and wormholes will continue no matter how many times you blow their war qual up. <laughs> so, you know, the, you've got your small month here, they lose their war qual, if they're in anything besides a five or a six, they have to build a new one. So for a couple of weeks, they're not mining. And then they get it again. And then they go mining. And then it blows up. So you've got that cycle of dead rock walls and building them to replace and then dying again. So it's pretty consistent. Uh, but dread use and fax use are primarily suggestive of farming. Dreads are used a lot in farming in C5 and C6s. And faxes are primarily used for PVP. So where we see fax usage going up, you've got more fights where people are crushing into each other, and in most cases, one of their faxes dies. Moving on to some smaller ships, and hopefully this chart's easy to read. I spend an awful lot of time playing with the colors to make these read, readable, but uh, you know the theme this year is Triglavian stuff, so in case uh, you were unfamiliar with wormhole space general PvP meta, wormhole space fights usually at close range right on the wormhole, and so that combined with slaves 
making armor almost always a better choice than shield outside of systems that give specific bonuses to tanking and fit types, you see short range armor ships is the general problem. And I say general, you've got you know, plenty of people that are like, oh, I use Enyos or you know, this or that. Um, but these are the big, these are the five big ships that you see. So what we have here is a year long trend of Lokis and Legions, Lashaks, Damnations, and Drekoviks. Now, at the beginning, we only see three lines because the Triglavian ships hadn't been introduced yet. Once the Lashaks introduced, you know, uh, the frigate and the cruiser are not generally used much in wormhole space. I did actually take some time to look at Zarms. They have no significant major increases that would be interesting enough to really show and talk about. Lashaks start to show up a little bit. People are like, oh, wow, this thing's really cool, and it can do a ton of damage if I sit here for a long time. Um, but uh, they didn't really pick up that widespread adoption. What did, once it was introduced, is you can see on the far right, you have that very sharply angled line. If the colors are a little hard to see, that's the Drekovic. Now, the Drekovic is kind of just rolling right on through everything because within that medium ship class, the Drekovic is significantly better than almost every other choice. There are pros and cons for sure, but I think the chart speaks for itself and how quick these things shot up to the top. And what you'll notice is in most of the months where the Drekovic and the Lashak pick up, all the other ships go down. So what I think will be something that will be interesting and I'll be watching, and I'm sure I'll share it again at some point in the future, is I suspect that we're going to see those keep going up a bit, and the other ships will go down as Triglavian ships continue to dominate the wormhole space meta. Um, worth noting also is far off to the right, the Lashak sees a significant bump. Over the last two-ish months, a lot of your larger corps have kind of finally gotten their Lashak fleets put together, and then they lose them, and then they put another one together. Um, as everyone's kind of feeling out. And right now, we're, at, we're seeing right now Wormhole Space figuring out what the new meta is. There are corporations that know what they're doing. There are corporations that don't. Generally, one of those corps does better than the other one. Um, and you're seeing a lot more Lashaks getting used as a mainline DPS ship out there. And when the fleets of Lashaks run into each other, the uh, bill generally gets pretty high. Um, so... The last thing I'm going to kind of run through, and uh, again, if there's one thing you take away from my presentation on wormholes, is there are a lot of people in wormholes, more than you might expect, and there's a lot more stuff blowing up. Um, I did not get into events and the who's and what corpse died here and what corpse showed up here that I do frequently in my other presentations because we didn't have time, but I did think it would be silly to not mention since my last presentation, Wormhole Space has set itself its new record for the largest combat ever seen. If you're unfamiliar with it, in December, the Initiative and some other groups along with them staged an eviction of Hard Knox's Keep Stars in the wormhole known as Rage. And that set a significant bar pushing the top of well over 2,000 pilots were involved in a system. I'm told it's the first time CCP ever actually put enough effort into reinforcing a wormhole node. It's been asked for in the past, and they're just like, yeah, there's like 10 of you. You don't need a better node. Um, but you know, then Initiative was like, we're there too. And they're like, oh, that's a lot of people. Then we'll, we'll do it. So the, the node was reinforced for Rage. Previous to Rage, the largest combat ever seen in wormhole space was the Battle of Hydra, which was March of 2018 when Paz Party was evicted from their wormhole, which saw over 800 pilots. So we went from 800 being the peak to well over 2,000. So I don't think we're going to see that trend keep going because 5,000 people in a wormhole is going to be both a lot of work to get them all there and is probably going to melt. So um, <laughs> I don't think we'll see that to keep trending, but uh, we'll keep an eye on it. So um, what I've got here, I'm not going to read each of these lines, but what I do every year when I do this presentation is I look at how many corporations are killing stuff in wormholes, which is, I think, generally a decent indicator of overall activity, along with how many they're killing. And what I would focus in on is a couple of the lines towards the bottom are your corps that have much higher kill counts. These are corporations that are there, living in wormhole space, been around for a bit, and they're also out there just you know, killing lots of people. You don't accidentally kill over a thousand ships. 
usually. <laughs> so, uh, you know, what we saw is we had 84 corps last time that killed over 1,000. Now we have 94. We went from a lot of the middle tier kinds that I have the like was this, now it's this. Most of those went up. Many of the ones that didn't is primarily because those corps moved down or like down my chart but up in kills so that we see people heading up. There's more corps out there fighting each other. Um, PVP spreads out a bit. Some people have uh, generally found themselves under the misconception that there's only a couple big PVP corps. There's a lot of PVP corps. Um, the amount of PVP made up by the top 18, I don't know why I use 18 the last two years. I just picked that number and now it would be silly to not keep going. The top 18 wormhole corps, based on the number of ships they killed, excluding the drifter, because he's actually the number one killer in wormhole space. <laughs> Wormholers just can't stop feeding ships to, uh, to the drifters. Um, made up 20 percent last year of all kills was just these 18 corps. It dropped to 19. Not significant movement, but I'd say largely a positive direction as other corps join that group. Um, and this, I thought, might be interesting to people that aren't wormholers, especially. Of all the ISK dying in EVE, one out of every 10 ISK died in a wormhole. So the, and that number has a, is trending upwards. Last year it was about 9.6 and now it's 10.9. 10.9 of all ISK destroyed in May died in wormhole space. I don't know what percentage of the player base lives in a wormhole, but I suspect wormhole space as far as ISK goes are punching above their weight. Maybe not surprising because most of wormhole space is thought of being really rich. For some reason, when I tell people I need them to go buy ships, they tell me they're poor. But, you know, like, lar largely we're all thought of being very rich. Or maybe it's because they spent all of it on their monocles. I'm not sure. Um, but, you know, wormhole space has a positive trend. And we're 10% of all the, all the ISK in EVE is dying in wormholes, which I think is just a really cool statistic. So... That's another one. I'll, you know, the list of things I said you had to remember, it actually is like three now, so remember that one. So uh, that's it for my chat. Um, I really hope everybody found some of this interesting and uh, had fun. But uh, we talked about you know, stuff dying, ISK dying, we covered the wormhole classes and uh, the trends of the brawl, which is something that I'll be touching on again in the future. If you missed the first part of my usual presentation where I do the month by month walkthrough, in the near future that I'll be getting done on talking in stations because I just couldn't cram it into this half hour. So thank you everybody and enjoy the rest of Eve North. Yeah.